Ages ago, I got the Linksys WRT 3200 ACM, which I tested using a fairly crude testing methodology, the single client test, that I now find to not be enough. Sadly, not long after it got somewhat popular, the WRT 3200 ACM reached end of life status, about 5 years after its release. Right now, it's still being supported, so you do get some updates in case of major security flaws, but that's about it. And Linksys will see support for the Wi-Fi 5 router as early as next year in some areas. The good news is that the people behind the OpenWRT project decided that it's way too early to throw the WRT3200 ACM in the landfill, so it is possible to both prolong its life and even add new and far better features using OpenWRT. So, in the following steps we'll see how to install OpenWRT and bring this powerful router back to life. The first step is to get a hold of the firmware file, so access the OpenWRT page and search for Linksys WRT3200 ACM. You should be able to find the firmware under installation. If you scroll a bit lower, you'll see that it presents the dual firmware flashing situation, where the WRT router will dynamically toggle between the OEM partition and the OpenWRT1 depending on the system upgrade. Essentially, you always get a fallback firmware available in case something goes wrong. Access the router web interface and it should be 192.168.1.1 which you do need to enter in the URL of any browser. I did set up the router years ago and used it for a good while, so I connected to the Wi-Fi network and then entered the admin password. But if the router is reset, you will find the Wi-Fi passkey on the label from the bottom of the WRT3200 ACM. As for the default administrative password, is admin. Go to Connectivity and near the Manual section, click on Choose File. Identify the file that you just downloaded from the OpenWRT page and click on Start. It will give some scary warning, but no matter, move forward. The router will restart and will take a few minutes until it will install the new firmware, so be patient. OpenWRT will not immediately broadcast any Wi-Fi network, so you do need to connect your PC to the WRT3200 ACM using an Ethernet cable. Then, as soon as you see that the router has connected to the PC, enter the default router IP address in the URL once again, and since there is no password yet, simply click Next. Set up a new password, and now it's time to set up the Wi-Fi networks. Find the Network tab at the top and select Wireless. Here you can see the three available radios. The WRT3200 ACM is not advertised as a tri-band wireless router, but lo and behold, it's actually a tri-band device. Well, kind of. I say that because the third radio, the Radio 2, is apparently not very reliable, and it's usually best kept disabled. Before enabling the first radio, let's prepare it. Click on Edit, and we get to see some fairly standard options. There are some advanced ones available as well. I change the channel, and you can also adjust the channel bandwidth if you want. I also altered the SSID, but everything else I left on default. Then, from the wireless security, I set up a strong passkey since we don't want anyone to be able to access the network freely. I did pretty much the same for the second radio, where I set up the 2.4 GHz network. After that, I enabled both radios and waited until they became visible to my network adapter. As soon as they did, I connected the computer to the Wi-Fi network, and as you can see, it was added under the associated stations. Obviously, this is just scratching the surface to what OpenWRT can do. Even in its default state, it is way superior to a lot of OEM firmers out there. But if you add packages, which can be done by going to system software, then you can include proper IPS IDS in the form of Snort, VPNs, and even add blocking. I do need to mention a small issue I had immediately, where even if I set the 5GHz network to the 160MHz channel bandwidth, it would not broadcast to the clients regardless of the channel I used, and I figured out that I had to remove a package. The way to do it is to SSH into the router, and I used PuTTY since it's an easy to use Windows OS tool. Just enter the IP address of the router, and then write root and the password you set before. Now enter the following command. Restart the router and the 5 GHz network should now be using the 160 MHz width. I didn't stop here and I wanted to see how well the router still holds up by today's standards. 
So I ran some iPerf tests using a Wi-Fi 6 client device, which is a computer equipped with an Intel AX200 adapter. It didn't really matter much that I didn't use an AC adapter considering that the AX200 was able to offer even better values across the board. The signal attenuation is more punishing at higher distances due to the more pronounced sensitivity to interference more so than what I saw with some modern Wi-Fi 6 routers. But the throughput is not bad at all on the 5 GHz radio band using both the 160 and the 80 MHz channel bandwidth. As for the 2.4 GHz radio performance, it wasn't as great as before when I first managed to test it and I know the reason. OpenWRT refused to switch to the 40 MHz channel bandwidth and stubbornly stayed on the 20 MHz one. It doesn't really matter that much since I am going to use it for IoT devices anyway. I couldn't just leave the WRT3200 ACM alone and not run some latency tests, but I didn't use the usual set of tools and instead I relied on a much quicker FLAND tool, also open source, so you can play around with it as well. But before anything else, understand that I'm not as familiar with it as with other tools I used prior to this. I set up a server host, connected a client and then ran FLAND against the 5 GHz Wi-Fi network without making any changes from the default settings. This was done while the network was set on the 160 MHz width, and there are definitely some serious spikes in latency, while the average itself is not that great. So I decided to install the SQM package and again didn't make any changes to its default settings. Obviously, limiting the throughput produced better latency values. But I wanted to switch it up a bit and push the TCP download and upload near 200 megabits per second. I also made some changes to the SQM quality of service to make it a bit more efficient. The latency was still, on average, a bit high, but better than on the first run. I am sure I can make it even better with some more adjustments. The point that I wanted to make is that the WRT3200 ACM is still a very valid Wi-Fi router and Linksys has no idea what they're doing not supported this series further. Anyway, a big thank you to the people from OpenWRT that are keeping this project alive and the support running. That's about it for today, thank you for watching and see you next time.